Hello everyone and welcome back! In this new lesson we are going to talk about a new way of defining our reactive forms. We are going to talk about the form builder Angular service. As we have seen so far, we have been defining our form model by defining form controls manually using the form control constructor and we have been grouping all the form together using the form group constructor. As we can see, the syntax that we use here in order to define our reactive form can be at times a little bit verbose. So in order to make things better, we are going to be introducing a new service that is going to allow us to define our forms in a more concise way and this is the Angular Form Builder service. Let's go ahead and inject it here in our constructor. So now, how can we use the Form Builder? We are going to be using it to define our form. Let's go ahead and access the form builder service and in order to create a form group we simply call here the group API. We are going to pass it a configuration object. The names of the properties of this object are going to be the names of our form fields, so email and password. The values that we are going to pass here are going to contain the information necessary in order to instantiate a form control and this information is passed under the form of an array. The first element of this array is going to be the initial value of the form, which in the case of our two form controls is going to be the empty string. Now all we have to do is to pass in the validators of each field and we can do so in a very concise way. So the second element of this configuration array that we are going to pass in here is going to be another array. So it's an array inside an array and here all we have to do is to pass in an array of validators. So let's go ahead and let's remove the validators here from our form control constructor and let's move them here inside this array instead. We could even pass a third value to this array that we are assigning to the password property which would be an array of asynchronous validators. We are going to be covering asynchronous validators very soon in our course. Right now, in this form, we only have synchronous validators that don't do backend calls. So with this, the configuration of our password control is now completed. We can go ahead and remove here the call to the form control constructor. Now, all we have to do is to do the same here for our email control. Let's go ahead and let's copy the list of validators and we can pass them here as an array. So the second element of this configuration array is going to be an array of synchronous validators. In this case, the required and email validators. We can now remove here our email property and have a look at the almost final version of our form group configuration. As we can see, this syntax is a lot more concise everything is a lot more compact, we can at a glance understand exactly what are the fields of our form and what are its business validation rules. There is a small detail however with the email field, this is an update on blur field, meaning that it should only update the form value when the field is blurred. So we can also configure that in this form group syntax in the following way. Instead of passing in here as the second element of this array, an array of validators, we are going to instead pass in here a configuration object. So this is a bit of a more verbose syntax for configuring a form field that we are going to need in certain cases. We can pass in here a property called validators that takes in an array of validators. There is also a property called async validators that will take all the asynchronous validators if we have any. And the third property that we can pass in here is update on, which we are going to be setting to blur. And with this we have completely refactored the definition of our form into using the form builder API. As we can see, this syntax is a lot more concise and easy to read. Notice that with this syntax our only member variable here in our login component is going to be the form, so we no longer have separate email and password form control instances that we can access 
directly here from the template. So this use of the form control directive is no longer possible, but instead we're going to be using here the form control name directive, which is the preferred syntax for linking our template with our form definition in our component. Notice that using the form builder we could also define an individual control. So by using this control API we simply would have to pass in here the initial form value and here we can pass an array of form validators or if we prefer we can also pass in here a configuration object containing one of these three properties. In our case we won't be needing this API and our refactoring is now completed. Let's now try out this new version of our reactive form. Let's start by typing in here a valid email and as we can see this field only updates on blur so the email value will only be set when we blur the email field as expected. Now let's type in here a lowercase password and as expected the password is not valid yet but if we type in here an uppercase and an numeric character the form validity state will change to true as expected. So as we can see this form builder version of our form is equivalent to what we had before with the advantage that it's a lot more concise. And with this our form is almost ready, let's in our next lesson conclude the implementation of our reactive form and compare the final version with the template driven version.